Hi everyone. Welcome to the fifth lecture of the series on sliding mode control. In this lecture, we will be discussing about chattering, which can be considered as a critical disadvantage of sliding mode control. Here is the overview. We start with the basic idea of chattering. Then we move on to the causes of chattering and finally the solutions of chattering. Chattering is basically the high frequency oscillation of the state trajectory around the switching surface or the sliding surface. And the chattering leads to a number of undesirable effects such as reduces the accuracy and performance of the system. The high frequency switching and oscillations can lead to heating in mechanical systems. And it can also result in noise due to vibrations. Next we move on to the causes of chattering. The possible causes of chattering are the presence of discontinuous time in the derivative of the sliding variable and the delay in switching. In general, a delay in switching can occur due to reasons such as discretization or discrete time implementation of the SMC control law. Non-ideal relay, which basically means relay with hysteresis or dead zone, etc. And unmodeled dynamics such as unmodeled actuator or sensor dynamics, etc. We have seen that the discrete time implementation of the SMC controller leads to finite frequency switching where the switching frequency is decided by the sampling period. And this finite frequency switching leads to the oscillation of the switching variable and the output variable around its steady state value. This is one of the normal reasons of chattering and this we can also call as discretization chattering. Even if we go for the continuous time implementation or analog implementation of the controller, Chattering can occur in practical cases because of switching delay. In practice, the relays cannot switch at infinite frequency. Therefore, there will be some switching delay and in most of the cases, the relays exhibit hysteresis behavior. And this results in finite frequency switching and thereby chattering. To illustrate this idea, we can consider the integrator system as given in equation number 1. Let the control input is chosen as k signum of x. And let k equal to 1, then the control input will be either plus 1 or minus 1 based on the sign of x. So, in that case, we have x dot equal to either plus 1 or minus 1. And if we integrate this, we can have the solution as x of t equal to x0 plus or minus t. The response of this system for ideal relay is shown in this first plot, where we can see that the state starts from the initial value and it converges to 0. Now the second plot shows the response of this integrator system with a practical relay where we have a switching delay which is denoted by xd. Here even though x is crossing 0 at t equal t1, t2, t3 or in general ti, because of the delay of td, the control switches from minus 1 to plus 1 at t1 plus td and from plus 1 to minus 1 at t2 plus td and in general it switches at ti plus td. Because of this delay in switching, the variables oscillates can be observed here and this leads to chattering. For ideal relay, we have xd will be equal to 0 and therefore td will also equal to 0 and hence there will be no chattering. Even if we have ideal relay without any switching delay, chattering can be occur. And this can be mostly because of unmodeled dynamics which is primarily faster dynamics of actuators or senses that we are neglecting during the modeling. This unmodeled dynamics results in a delay in switching and it leads to chattering. Here we can use the integrator system example for illustrating the effect of unmodeled actuator dynamics. Suppose the actuator dynamics that is neglected during modeling can be described as in equation number 4, which is in the form of a first order differential equation. And by taking Laplace transform and rearranging the terms, we can obtain the transfer function for this system dynamics as in equation number 5 where ua is the output of the actuator and u is the control input which is basically the input of the actuator. Note that here this small letter s denotes the complex frequency in the transfer function and we usually denote the complex frequency using this s. However, in this lecture series we also use small letter s for representing the sliding variable. Therefore, in order to avoid confusion, we represent the complex frequency in magenta color whenever it is used. Now suppose the time constant tau of this transfer function is too small. 
so that the actuator has a pole at minus 1 by 2 which is far away from the majority axis therefore this dynamics can be neglected and with the continuous control law neglecting this actuator dynamics may not create any issues however in the case of discontinuous control it can lead to chattering now for the integrator system with unmodeled actuator dynamics the input to the integrator system will be ua which is actually the output of the actuator therefore the output of the integrator system will be x0 plus integral of ua here this figure a shows the block diagram of the integrator system with the unmodeled actuator dynamics here ua is the output of the actuator which will be the input of the integrator system u will be the input of this actuator and this plot shows the response of x u and ua for the integrator system here x is shown in this black color u is shown in red color and ua is shown in green color consider x0 as greater than 0 so here we are considering x0 as 2 so in that case the control input u will be minus 1 and the states will start decreasing now when the state crosses 0 the control input is start switching from minus 1 to plus 1 which we can observe here however due to the actuator dynamics the actuator output will take some time to switch from minus 1 to positive sign which can be observed here therefore whenever x crosses 0 the control input u switches sign but the actuator output ua takes some time td to switch which depends on the actuator time constant tau and from this figure we can observe that the output x will decreases until the ua changes sign hence the delay in the switching of ua results in the oscillation of the system output and thereby chattering Next, we move on to the unmodeled sensor dynamics. We are considering the integrator system with an unmodeled sensor dynamics as shown here, where the sensor dynamics is defined by SN equation number 7, and this dynamics can be represented as a transfer function as shown here. So, here also this S will denote the complex frequency, and we denote the S in magenta color. The output of the sensor is denoted by XS, and the input of the sensor will be X, which is the actual state. And this plot shows the response of the state x, the measured state xs, and the control input u. And here we can see that the effect of the sensor dynamics is that the measured state xs lags the actual state x. And in the SMC control law, we will be using the measured state xs. So here the control will switch us from minus 1 to plus 1 only when the measured state xs crosses 0. The switching will be based on the zero crossings of the measured state xs which is in turn delayed by TD with respect to the zero crossing of the actual state X. Because of this delay, the output overshoots until the control input changes sign. And this causes oscillations in the output and thereby chattering. Next, we discuss a few methods that can be used for reducing chattering. The first one is called as boundary layer SMC, in which the signal function is approximated as in equation number 8. So here we approximate the signal function using a saturation function where the saturation function is defined as in equation number 9. Now the control input will be chosen as the sum of a continuous control time and the saturation function. So here the saturation function basically replaces the discontinuous control time. And this approach leads to a boundary layer around the sliding surface with the width capital K by small k where capital K is the bound and small letter K is the linear gain. The second approach is called as quasi sliding mode control in which we use a continuous approximation of the discontinuous signal function. Here we approximate the signal function as in equation number 11 where we use a sigmoid function for approximating the signal function. And here epsilon is a parameter can be adjusted for deciding the smoothness of the function. Then in quasi sliding mode the control input is chosen as a sum of the continuous control and the sigmoid function. The next one is called as SMC with variable gain switching in which the switching gain is selected as a function of the sliding variable as given in equation number 13. Here K of S denotes the variable gain and we can select K of S as in equation number 14 where K of S is a function of the magnitude of the sliding variable. Here we can observe that as S becomes 0, K of S is also becomes 0 and which means that the switching gain becomes 0 on the sliding surface 
and therefore the chartering will be eliminated at steady state. And whenever the state's deviating from the sliding surface, the magnitude of S starts increasing, and in that case, the switching gain also increases. And another approach for reducing chartering is to use higher order sliding mode control, which we will be discussing in the next lecture. That completes this lecture. Thanks for listening.